Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Ministers, Honourable Leader of Opposition, Honourable Members of Parliament, and a special bulimanaka and a welcome to my friends from the West from Nandi International School. I hope you have a wonderful day in Parliament today. Madam Speaker, I, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to deliver a ministerial statement in my capacity as the Minister for Lands and Mineral Resources. Madam Speaker, the, the Ministry, through the Department of Mineral Resources, manages the effective development of groundwater resources and the provision of clean, safe drinking water to households. And today, Madam Speaker, we mark World Water Day, and I'd like to wish this august house a happy World Water Day. Also at this juncture, also at my opportune moment, Madam Speaker, to say thank you to all of those people who export our lovely water to the world, and that includes the small companies and the big ones, and pretty much have put Fiji as one of the best waters in the world. World Water Day, Madam Speaker, is about taking action to tackle the water crisis, and today there are about 663 million people living without a safe water supply close to home, spending countless hours queuing or trekking to distant sources and coping with the health impacts of using contaminated water. And globally, the vast majority of all the wastewater from our homes and cities, industry, and agriculture flows back to nature without being treated or reused, uh, reducing um, and safely treating and reusing wastewater, for example, in agriculture and aquaculture, and it actually protects workers, farmers, and consumers, and promotes food security, health, and well-being. Last month, Madam Speaker, the Ministry, in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister, the Water Authority of Fiji, and the Department of Energy, commissioned the reticulated water sources, which now provides safe and clean drinking water to 274 households with a population of about 1,197 uh, people in the villages of Navakawau in, Ta in Tamiuni and three villages in Kumbalao and Bua, namely Kiombo, Ravaravi and Namalata, including Kumbalao District School in Bua. These groundwater sources will supplement the existing water sources uh, to ensure a, a more sustainable supply. Additionally, Madam Speaker, work on water supply connection has also been completed at Ra High School, which provides water to 635 students. Madam Speaker, furthermore, the Fijian government is working towards ensuring that every person has access to a sufficient supply of clean and safe water in, the most, in most of the remote areas in Fiji. And the ministry is targeting to assess around 35 groundwater sources and drill 25 and reticulate 15 boreholes in various remote areas around Fiji. The reticulation works are currently being carried out in Navatu village and Navasu government station in Kumbalao Bua. This will benefit an additional 38 odd households. And the Speaker, the Fiji First Government will continue to assist the people of Fiji in meeting one of the fundamental human needs, which was not addressed by previous governments, especially, and I say this quite loud, Madam Speaker, especially in the Northern Division. Madam Speaker, in addition to providing access to clean, safe, and consistent water supply, and especially the rural communities, the Ministry is also responsible uh, for early warning systems in terms of disaster. As we all know, Madam Speaker, Fiji lies along the Circum Pacific, which is commonly known as the Ring of Fire, an area of very high seismic and volcanic activity. And records indicate that the daily occurrences of earthquakes within the Fiji region, signifying that the region is uh, geologically active. And this poses a major concern to the country in terms of earthquakes, regional or local, that can generate tsunamis. And the Ministry will continuously uh, initiate uh, proactive measures in partnering with other stakeholders in enhancing our detection, detections in, and also in the dissemination of warnings through early warning systems. Madam Speaker, there have been questions from the opposite side of the House, uh, speci specifically earlier on, with respect to foreshore leases and the benefits to resource owners. And allow me to enlighten this august House on that particular subject, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, all foreshore leases administered and issued by the Ministry provide the highest benefit to the traditional fishing rights owners. And of course, it is in accordance with Section 29 of our Constitution. 
Mr. Speaker, the foreshore developments provide subsequent benefits to the Itoke Ngoli or resources owners, um, um, and they are such as compensation for loss of fishing rights. And this compensation, Madam Speaker, is determined by the Department of Fisheries through a fisheries impact assessment. Investors obviously enter into an agreement with the traditional fishing rights owners for other incentives and benefits, and also provides employment to local coastal communities that help provide, improve their li livelihoods. Madam Speaker, in addition, the government has put, in, has put in place a plan and policy to better manage <coughs> foreshore developments, in particular the revisitation of fisheries impact assessments. And this policy, Madam Speaker, is far-reaching, uh, where government is considering the full economic perspective beyond the current generation. The existing mode is, uh, is in the form of a lump sum payment to the fishing rights owners at the commencement of the foreshore lease. That particular issue is being looked at at the moment and it should be revised. And the fishing rights compensation is being recommended to be an annual payment. And this is to ensure, Madam Speaker, and this is quite an important issue, this is to ensure that not only the current generation of the fishing rights owners will benefit, but their future generations, which also will also benefit from this particular mode of payment. No previous government, but the Fiji First Government has had the vision to implement this mode of payment to cover the full term of the 99-year leases, Madam Speaker. Oh. Madam Speaker, there was also a question, uh, this is specific, there was also a question from the opposite side of the House on the formula cal calculation to compensate those in Yatu Malolo who have been denied uh, access by filmmakers of the Survivor Fiji series. I'd like to confirm to this Honourable House, Madam Speaker, that the traditional fishing rights owners had consented to waive their fishing rights during the 12-month period that their fishing ground was used for the shooting of the Survivor series. Madam Speaker, by way of background, the audiovisual sector's contribution to the GDP is increasing annually. In 2016 alone has been one of the busiest years uh, from film productions being shot in Fiji. A total of 56 film productions were hosted in Fiji, and out of this were eight major productions that were budgeted at an estimated $135 million. The productions brought an estimated $43 million directly into the Fijian economy and generated about $120 million, $120 million in new economic activity. Interest, Madam Speaker, for filming in Fiji has grown significantly over the past few years due to the film tax rebate that's being offered and, of course, due to our stunning locations. During filming on location, certain restrictions are put in place to avoid disruption of the production. However, this is not done, Madam Speaker, without proper consent from land and resource owners. Therefore, during the filming on location at Yatumalolo, the traditional uh, fishing rights owners were approached to provide consent, and the TFRO had provided consent to waive their fishing rights during the 12 months period that their fishing ground was used for the shooting of the Survivor Series. It should also be noted that the appropriate compensation was negotiated between the production house and the traditional fishing rights owners for foregoing their rights for that particular period. This negotiation was conducted by the Nanronga Provincial Council, Provincial Office. And as a result, Madam Speaker, the TFROs at Yatumalolo received the total amount of Fijian $140,000 for 12 months. That tantamounts to uh, roughly about $11,000 per month. Furthermore, as a result of the filming in Yatumalolo, the benefits to the people was not limited to compensation, but included the creation of employment for 200 people in the surrounding area, and hiring of fiber boats and the procurement of meals for the entire production. And in addition to the benefits just mentioned, the landowners also received compensation for their dry land, which amounted to 403,000 Fijian dollars and was paid through the ITL TV. So there's no issue of the landowners and the traditional fishing right owners not being compensated or not being compensated enough. Madam Speaker, the Ministry is also tasked with uh, uh, regularizing the tenancy for informal settlements on state land. And not only are we in line with the Bainimarama government's targets for regularization of informal settlements, but also we are contributing towards a sustainable goal number one of no poverty and poverty in all its form everywhere and through the provision of basic services such as land for living. 
And to date, Madam Speaker, the Ministry had issued a total of 217 approval notices, 72 for the uh, Western Division, 77 for the Northern Division, and 68 for the Central Division. And we are work working towards the issuance of 135 approval notices in the not too distant future, and this will benefit an estimated 135 families in the Western, Northern, and Central Divisions. Madam Speaker, allow me <clears throat> to draw your attention also to Honorable Dulaki Barata's comments that by regularizing informal settlements, this government is encouraging squatters. In fact, let me confirm to the honorable member that we are not encouraging squatters. We are acting in compliance with the provisions of section 35.1 of the 2013 constitution in promoting the right to housing and sanitization. And let me reiterate my last statements and, I'm, and may I quote, the regularization of these informal statements, uh, resettlements, strengthens government's commitment to the Fijian people to have access to land, essential services, and infrastructure. And the issuance of these lease notices brings security and freedom to participate in community life and creates a legacy to the next generation and provide much longer planning horizon for business and resource entrepreneurship and enable the people to be financially independent. Madam Speaker, with reference to um, the televised news bulletin last night, about the eviction of nine families in Bilo Besari. Government, I'm proud to inform this house that government officially moved in to their rescue and we've assisted them in being resettled in Wainandui. Madam Speaker, the Ministry is also progressively working towards renew renewal of all expired agricul ag agriculture leases. These expired leases date back from, from as far as 1992 and the Ministry is vigorously ensuring that the expired leases are renewed and we will ensure that the lessees have been, uh, that have been cultivating their leases according to their lease conditions and all the lessees are therefore encouraged to cultivate their leases accordingly. Mr. Speaker, as mentioned in my previous statement, I reiterate that the new technologies also are changing the way that we actually do things and sharing information and data. The Geospatial Division uh, within the Ministry has embarked on an awareness program for stakeholders on this interactive web GIS product. And the object, objective of the Vanua GIS awareness is to familiarize government departments on this new web map application. With the inclusion of new features and tools, plus the integration of all the collated data uh, from various government departments and stakeholders, it is important to demonstrate how these different map layers have combined to make faster decisions in regards to geospatial information. And most stakeholders have been using the old system, which has now been replaced by the Vanua GIS, which is accessible, Madam Speaker, 24-7. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, may I re reiterate the Ministry of Lands and Mineral Resources will continue to fulfill it, uh, it role, its role for the benefit of all the communities in Fiji. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Now, call on the Leader of Opposition or Hotel Signate to speak in response. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I thank the Honourable uh, Minister for his uh, statement. Uh, Madam Speaker, I would like to uh, reiterate my comment that uh, regularization of people living in squatter areas uh, is encouraging squatting uh, in vacant uh, crown lands. Uh, why I said this, uh, Madam Speaker, is there is a system whereby people that want to uh, lease state land to follow. So uh, people that uh, follow that system uh, do not uh, get the, the application approved uh, in time. So the people uh, that squat are given priority over these people. And that is why we are experiencing a lot of squatters in vacant state lands. Also, Madam Speaker, the government is issuing leases to these people and uh, with an uh, agreement for lease. And this agreement for lease are not acceptable in many lending institutions for their security or... And uh, the renewal of uh, agricultural leases, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, this is a uh, 
ongoing uh, process. If they have a lot of backlog in the, uh, in the renewal of agricultural leases, it shows the laxity in the department in uh, processing these renewals. Because leases, there has a definite time, starting time, and a definite ending time. So everybody knows when the lease is going to expire. So the process should start before the lease expires, and there shouldn't be any backlog. The, the core role of the Ministry of Lands, uh, Madam Speaker, is to administer state land, so that they properly administer state land, so that the people that uh, uh, reside or uh, lease state land should pay their rent in time. Uh, Madam Speaker, and the government should get the uh, revenue it should get from uh, leasing its uh, properties. Uh, from the record, uh, Madam Speaker, the Crown lease arrears, this is during the uh, 2010 to 2018, at the moment it stands at $24,700,000. This is the highest arrears that has been recorded by the department. The premium arrears is $282,000. Taxi base arrears, $40,000. Narara Barracks rental arrears, $60,000. Service registration arrears $26,800. Railroad registration arrears $35,000. These are the core functions of the department that they should be doing, uh, Madam Speaker. And uh, there is a scheme in the, in the Ministry which is called the buyback scheme, which was introduced by the previous government. Most of these, uh, so it should be more. Most of these uh, uh, properties that were bought under these schemes, uh, Madam Speaker, didn't see the light of the day. Uh, some uh, failed to uh, pay the uh, payment in time, and all these uh, land had been uh, administered by the uh, land bank. Some have already paid, uh, Madam Speaker, but have not been uh, transferred to the uh, respective uh, uh, Matagali. One uh, case uh, on hand is Nawendau Land Purchase Cooperative in Burasawa, Olau. Uh, they had already paid, but the title had not been transferred to them, uh, Madam Speaker. And uh, with the GIS, Vanua GIS, uh, 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 Madam Speaker, this is an ongoing process, and they should develop this thing fully to be more accessible to uh, the uh, business uh, people and the ordinary citizen. The assessment of compensation on, uh, on the uh, uh, foreshore development, uh, Madam Speaker, now with the absence of the agricultural tribunal, the government should be formulating uh, policies on how this should be looked at. With the compensation uh, for the use of fishing rights, uh, for the filming uh, of uh, films in the Mamanuda, Madam Speaker, the uh, consultation with the uh, uh, Provincial Council should be done by the NLTB. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Should learn something. Eh? Thank you. And I call on the leader of the um, NFP or his designate to speak in response. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the Minister of Lens for his uh, statement and uh, Madam Speaker, we all acknowledge that uh, water is essential for life and uh, we must ensure at all times that uh, we have clean and affordable drinking water available to every Fijian. Uh, Madam Speaker, and work in this direction must not be ad hoc but should continue consistently to sustain the programs that we have. Uh, Madam Speaker, on the uh, fishing rights that the minister alluded to, the, there needs to be more consultation with the owners of the fishing rights in Golingoli. And many a times we see problems that come about is just because either they say they have not been consulted or there is lack of consultation. So this is an area where the uh, minister would be asked to uh, give more prominence to. Uh, Madam Speaker, as far as the weather reporting, 
Yes, we agree. But we must also invest in early warning systems. Um, these early warning systems, as you know, Fiji is prone to natural disasters. We have had uh, the second uh, largest uh, cyclone in Fiji, Cyclone Winston. And from that experience, we have learned uh, the bad lessons and the good lessons. And the, one of the good lessons would be to improve our warning systems. Uh, Madam Speaker, on non-formal settlements, I, to, we must ensure that not only as parliamentarians, but it is the, every initiative must come from every Fijian towards regularizing the settlements. We cannot afford to have one third of our people living in informal settlements and who are denied the basic rights. The, the, the renewal of, <laughs> uh, I, I hope we are a different party, okay? Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, one of the concerns and challenges that I have is still the renewal of leases, which uh, we did talk about in the last session of Parliament, and uh, unfortunately the Minister has not uh, alluded to that. I thought he was going to talk on the progress of this the renewal of leases and the issuance of leases. They remain a challenge to you, for your department. Uh, Madam Speaker, the Minister had uh, uh, instituted early the quality standards which require every request to be resolved in a timely manner. And non-compliance triggers alerts at the Minister's office as well as uh, that of the Permanent Secretary. And in some cases where staff do not uh, uh, carry out instructions, as requested, they are dealt with. So the question is, are we administratively empowering our staff to deal with these situations? In particular, when you have a case of backlog of leases to be renewed. Uh, Madam Speaker, the other one is the ad hoc subdivision of lands. And I'll give you an example. Um, the tenants who, the proposed tenants who uh, acquire land on a sale and purchase with a lessee. Um, sometimes this takes years, even 10, 12, 20 years to formalize. In the event they do a subdivision and obtain a survey plan, what actually happens, Madam Speaker, is the lands department, this is what I want to bring to the attention of the minister, is that the leases over the subdivided lots are issued in the name of the original lessee. And the original lessee and the tenants, they have to run around to get these leases transferred into their own names. And in some cases, Madam Speaker, these unscrupulous land, land, um, the leases, lessees, they even ask for or demand for higher consideration from uh, what they have been agreed in the original uh, price. The lessor. The the, the, the lessee in this case being the, the head lessee. And so these head lessees, what they do, Madam Speaker, is to the tenants, they are so unscrupulous as I said, that there's one case, and I can quote the reference to the minister for his information, LD4101637 in Mololo. And he subdivided these lands, where lands department made a grave mistake of issuing the leases to the head lessee. And now he's giving a run around to these people. He's by not transferring them, asking for more money. I believe this is with your department. Please have a look at that. Thank you, Honorable Member.